Hey YouTube, today we're gonna to be doing a bit of a different video. So we're gonna be talking about home networking. For those of you who watched the live streams, this was a topic that was brought up recently concerning fiber-based internet and how to actually take advantage of higher speeds for things like desktop computers or a home NAS or something like that. And what I have here in front of me are a couple of switches that I got from Micro Center so these two are the actual ones that are new. These I've had for a number of years now because you can see this is a gigabit switch. There's another gigabit switch, which means that these the ports on these do 1,000 megabit per second or one gigabit per second. So what that means is if you're lucky enough to have fiber to the home internet service where you have up to one gig service, that means if you have a internal network environment that is gigabit based, you can actually take advantage of the gigabit internet speed all the way down to your client devices. So you would need something like this eight port TP-Link or a five port from like TrendNet or something. There's a bunch of these brands. I just randomly got these from Micro Center a few years ago because this is they were dirt cheap and they get the job done and I have fiber-based internet, so I have one gig up and down. However, if you're somebody who has the option to have higher speed internet, like maybe you have two gig fiber, or five gig fiber, or even 10 gig fiber, you wouldn't be able to take advantage of those higher speeds if you're using a switch to connect your desktop computer to your router. So if even if I had 10 gig fiber internet this is essentially going to become my bottleneck even though my computer has a 10 gigabit network interface and the router is 10 gig fiber if I'm using this switch I'm still gonna be stuck at 1 gig speed so assuming the router has the supported speed what would you need to do to upgrade the infrastructure that's kinda of like the purpose of this video is to kinda of show how I'm going to upgrade the infrastructure here to take advantage of the higher speeds. What I've learned is there's a significant jump in price points. You guys can see like this IntelliNet 8 port 2.5 gig switch with a SFP 10 gig uplink. This is like $145 at Micro Center. So a similar 8 port switch that's only 1 gig, this is only like $20 or like $25. So it's significantly more expensive to get a 2.5 gig. So what I'm going to do, we're going to kind of break this up. What I've decided to do is for my devices like the PlayStation 5, that only is a 1 gig port. So the PlayStation 5 would not benefit from being connected to a 2.5 gig Ethernet port. So I can reuse my existing 1 gig switches for devices that are capped at 1 gig. That way, I can create what's, what is an access switch environment, and then I can use these 2.5 gig switches as a distribution layer, or the core of the network where everything will then have access to the internet at the edge. So that's kind of how the architecture is going to be set up. So we're going to do essentially... I'm going to have access switches at the lowest layer. We're going to have a distribution switch for taking anything that can do high speeds. So for example, my PC can benefit from 2.5 gig uh, speed. So my PC would connect into one of these on this 2.5 gig from Ubiquiti. This is their Unify lineup, which I think is one of the best. Um, this is one of the most cost effective 2.5 gig switch options unless you really need an 8 port. So this is going to be our distribution, this is the access, so this is going to be like PlayStation 5, the Switch 2 docking station, you know, anything that's capped at like 1 gig would plug into one of these. My desktop computer would plug into to one of these. This switch will also plug in to one of these ports, this switch will also plug into one of those, hence why this is an aggregation layer, and these guys are at the, the access. And then for the core switch, we're going to use this one. Because this one technically can do 10 gig over this SFP port here. But I'm not going to need to use that. So my router will plug in to one of these. And then another port will plug into this. 
and then this will have my desktop. So my desktop will get to the internet from here to here to the router and then out. And then everything else that doesn't need 2.5 gig will be plugged into one of these. So that's basically how the setup works. So let's look at how that looks in the actual environment. Okay, so we're kind of here in the network room and I've got the IntelliNet layer two switch, unmanaged switch connected here. I basically swung over all the cables that were on the old TP-Link, which you guys can see down here. This is the old. TP-Link 1 gig switch there, unmanaged. Uh, this thing was pretty solid, you know, like uh, we're gonna test some of the speeds here. But you can see, so I swung all the cables over. Those all run to the distribution panel that I have, which will then connect to all the different rooms that have access to RJ45. So we have stuff like the game room, south, master, north, front, etc., garage, all those different rooms. Everything is connected there. So obviously the more downstream ports you have, the more a larger switch you will need, or you'll need uh, more than one. You'll need a daisy chain at the core, which is not really a good idea. Um, but in this case, an eight port, 2.5 gig handles everything. This basically gives me seven downstream and one uplink to the router so we got out of eight ports one goes to the router and we have all these other ones so i've got this open one here for testing purposes so i have my lenovo thinkpad here with the lenovo 2.5 gig usb-c adapter here so we're going to plug this into this open port here so just plug that in you can see that lights up and sure enough, right there you can see, we have 2.5 gigabit. So we've got 2.5 gig internet speed network access. So there you go, that shows that this switch is working as expected. So it auto-negotiated to 2.5 gig speed. Now depending on the sort of cables that you're using, so I'm using Cat5 cables or Cat5e cables. It's kind of a mix of Cat5e and some of them are CAT6 actually, but the infrastructure in the walls, so from this patch panel forward is actually either CAT5E, it's definitely not CAT6 because it was originally 100 meg and I had to rewire it to get gigabit speeds and we are able to get the 2.5 gig speeds and which we will look at later on in some of the other rooms to verify that we're getting the full 2.5 gig so this is the core of the network infrastructure, the central point to the router at the edge. Now let's go ahead and look at the distribution layer. Okay, so for the distribution, what we're doing is we're going to swap the one gig, so I have this trend net here, five port, one gig unmanaged switch, which is very cheap. This was, I think this was like $15, 12 to $15 at Micro Center when I bought it a few years ago. But yeah, that's the trend net. Pretty solid, it, it got the job done, but now we're upgrading to 2.5 gig. So what I'm gonna be using here is the Unify from Ubiquity. And uh, what it has here is an interesting feature, it's called PoE, Power Over Ethernet. So technically, if I had a an uplink switch or a core switch that supported power over ethernet, I could literally just plug this in to, that, to this port and this switch would automatically be powered. It would not need for me to use the AC adapter that's included in the box. I would literally just get the power over the ethernet. The benefit is, first of all, you don't need the wall outlet plug for the switch because you're powering it off of the upstream switch right here. And the other thing is it just less cable, less clutter, and you get a little bit of energy efficiency there because you don't need to run an extra power draw through the wall. So, but and unfortunately, I don't have a power over ethernet switch in the core. We just showed that we're using the IntelliNet. So we are gonna to have to plug in the USB-C. So what I'm going to do is this, this connection will uplink to the core switch that we just looked at a minute ago. And then these four ports will be used for any sort of network device, including a desktop computer. 
to plug in and get the 2.5 gig ethernet speed. So just to kind of show how that looks once it's connected, so here is the power. So I've got the power cable plugged into the, the AC right there over the USB-C. And then we've got the connection through the wall that goes to the core where the patch panel is and then that plugs in to the core switch. And then we have this cable is plugging into the desktop computer. This is actually an X870E ASRock Nova which is connected on the other end of this. And then this is for a laptop docking station, which is not in use right now. That's why the lights are not on. So overall, this little, this little Unify 2.5 gig switch is pretty good. This was like $50 at Micro Center, and so far it seems to be working pretty well. So let's go ahead and verify the internet speed. We are doing 2.5 gig on a download speed. On 2.5 gig Ethernet port here on Threadripper, it's just to kind of show what the download speeds look like once we have the switching infrastructure set up to support something like 2.5 gig fiber services. So that's pretty much it. That is the distribution layer. And then for the access layer, what you can do is if you have devices that don't need 2.5 gig, like for example, if you have a gaming console like the PlayStation 5, that's a very good example. It only runs at one gig on the ethernet port. So you can still use your old existing one gig switches. What you would do is you just plug this into one of the ports on the distribution switch and you just further daisy chain it down that way. So anyway guys, this was a quick video on home networking, how to upgrade your infrastructure to support higher than one gigabit fiber internet speeds. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.